everyone, I am here today to do the Wizard of Oz book tag and I was tagged by Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing who is one of the creators. She created this tag along with Becca over at Bookworm Becca and I'll leave links to both their videos down below. Question 1. Dorothy, a character who is out of their element. And for this one I picked a character called Second Officer Herbert Stone from the Midnight Watch. And this book is about a ship called the Californian, which was nearby the Titanic when it sank. It's fictional, but very highly based upon a lot of research, and so is relatively accurate. So this person did exist, and it's likely that the story perhaps went in the manner that is suggested in the book. But this guy is out of his element because he sees the Titanic fire rockets, and he calls the captain and is like, look, there's a ship over there in trouble. And the captain doesn't really do an awful lot to help him out. And so he keeps seeing more and more rockets and he just ends up more and more distressed and doesn't know what to do. Which leaves him massively, massively out of his element. And I can only imagine how it must have felt to, if it did plan out like that, to be in that situation how scary and stressful and how guilt-ridden he must have felt the next day as well when they found out about the Titanic sinking. Question two, Toto, your favourite pet or sidekick? And there was only one, there was only ever going to be one option for this one for me. N no competition at all. And I'm going for Hedwig out of Harry Potter. And Hedwig is just the cutest owl ever, which is why I just couldn't resist getting my own. I got this Hedwig from the Platform 9 and 3 quarters shop at King's Cross Station and I just love it so much. I always, throughout the years of reading Harry Potter through my teenage years, just wanted an owl that would bring me post, would be my best friend, would look out for me, and now I've got one. Question 3, Over the Rainbow, a book with a beautiful cover. And for this one I'm going for one of my most recent cover buys, you might have seen it in my recent book haul. And that is The Sky Is Everywhere by Jandy Nelson because this cover is just absolutely stunning. It is why I bought it. The spine even is beautiful. The back is beautiful. This is just beauty on paper. Number four, Yellow Brick Road, a book that took you on a journey. And for this one, I have gone for Passenger by Alexandra Bracken because it took me on two types of journeys. It took me on a massive reading journey because it took me, I can't remember how long, easily a month, possibly longer to read this book. <laughs> It was just a mammoth journey for me. But also, the story itself, you time travel to loads of different places and it's just such an exciting journey in that sense that I just, I knew I had to pick this book for this question. It just fit perfectly for me. Question five, Ruby Red Slippers. An iconic bookish item. And for this one, I have gone for the dresses out of the selection series. On each cover, there is always an absolutely stunning, stunning, stunning dress. And... I really couldn't think of anything else other than going with the cliche of like a wand out of Harry Potter or something like that but when you see these dresses on these covers you know straight away that they're from that series they are so iconic they play such a part in the actual selection process in everyone always dressing up to look their best and I want these dresses I want to look like a princess <laughs> question six scarecrow a book that made you think and for this one I have gone for Elizabeth is missing by Emma Healy and this is because, on the face of it, this is just a contemporary mystery novel where someone is missing. But it has, it goes so much deeper than that and it makes you think so much more because Maud, the main character, is an elderly lady and her best friend Elizabeth has gone missing. And you aren't sure whether she has gone missing because something has happened to her or whether something has happened to her in the past and Maud has just forgot about it because Maud is such a confused old lady and it really makes you think about what it must be like for old people and also people in families where they've got elderly people suffering from things like dementia and it was just a real eye-opener for me. Question 7, The Tin Man, a book that gave you all the feels and for this one I'm having to go with Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. I don't think I need to say an awful lot more than that but this was a mammoth of a roller coaster of a journey for me. I just, I was all over the place with it. I was laughing, I was close to crying, I was surprised, I was just, it was everything to me. Easily one of the best books I've read this year. I 
can't praise it enough and I would have picked this book for a question further on as well except I'm trying 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 to vary it up a bit so the twist in this book towards the end was just phenomenal and just had me amazed. Question 8, The Cowardly Lion, a character that seems tough on the outside but is kind on the inside. And for this one I'm going for a character out of Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. And the terrible thing is I really, really can't think of this character's name right now, it is totally escaping me. I feel like an idiot. Can't remember it at all. But there is a character in this book that Wade meets at the first sort of gateway, if you will, to the first sort of puzzle in the, the hunt and she seems really really tough at first but the longer he gets to know her again she proves that she is really tough on the outside but she also proves that she's truly kind on the inside and she was the first character that sprung into my head even though I can't think of her name. Question 9 Lions and Tigers a spooky book and for this one I've gone for Bloodstained Volume 1 by Linda Sedgick. And this is a graphic novel that I picked up earlier this year that starts off relatively sort of normal. There's this girl that is struggling to hold down a job. She tries everything. Sometimes it's her fault that she doesn't hold the job down and other times it is just, just the way it is. Random dumb luck. And then she picks up this job which has a really creepy setting to it. And honestly like left me feeling a little bit creeped out as we slowly progressed through the book as it turned out she was going to go and take the job and as she arrived at the job and I just thought it was really creepy to be honest and spooky. Question 10 The Emerald City a book with your favourite setting and for this one I'm going for the whole of the Infernal Devices trilogy by Cassandra Clare because this one is sort of set in Victorian England and I cannot get enough of Victorian England that sort of whole time period Jack the Ripper sort of time, a little bit before, a little bit but after, it's just like my favourite time to read about. And London. I just love reading about London, so that all thrown together is just my perfection. Question 11, The Poppy Field, a book that put you to sleep. Now, this one isn't entirely accurate in the sense of, well it did put me to sleep several times in fact, but it was more my lack of understanding and following rather than the book actually being rubbish and that is The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton and I feel like if anything I just wasn't intelligent enough for this book and so on several occasions I did doze off, literally doze off. I was listening to the audiobook too so it was just really soothing and before I knew it I was gone. Question 12, The Wicked Witch, your favourite villain? And for this one do I really need to say any more Voldemort? Now this is probably the very cliche answer, but it's honestly the truth. I really can't think of a villain that stands out in my head any more on a regular basis than Voldemort. Voldemort is just the first proper villain that I ever got exposed to in a book series because I didn't read anything like a series of unfortunate events when I was younger or anything like that. So I only ever came across villains in standalone books. So to read about a villain through several books made Voldemort stay in my head forever. Question 13, Glinda the Good Witch, a character that is very good. And for this one, I am going to go with Katie from Illuminate by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, because what she does towards the end of this book, which I can't tell you or it'd be a massive spoiler, but she does something in this book, which just makes her so selfless and just a true heroine as much as anything. She really just proved how good a person she is deep down. To be going through what she was going through and yet still do what she did. Such a heroine. Question 14. The Wizard of Oz. A book that seemed impressive but ended up being a letdown. And for this one I'm going to go for Someone Like You by Roald Dahl. This is a collection of his adult short stories. The first story in the book I thought was Okay, it was a, a, a good intro. The second story I absolutely loved. The third story was okay and then it was all downhill from there. I really didn't enjoy this compilation at all and I felt so truly disappointed because I love Roald Dahl and I wanted to enjoy his short stories, his adult short stories. He's shown me that he is capable of writing ones that I enjoy because I loved the second story so, so, so much and this book was just 
such a letdown for me. Such a massive, massive, massive disappointment. 15, The Man Behind the Curtain, a book with a great twist. And I couldn't think of one for ages for this one. I'm sure I've read so many books with so ama many amazing twists. So in the end, I went for The Tea Planter's Wife by Dinah Jeffries because there is such a horrific twist at the end of this book that just makes the story so bittersweet and just so heartbreaking too. This is a historical fiction and it is, oh, it's just, oh, I don't even know the words. I don't even know the words for how this book made me feel towards the end of the book. It was just heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. I mean, we often have twists where we are surprised or shocked or scared. It's rare to get a twist to the point where you feel broken inside. Your heart has been stamped all over. Um, that is what this twist did for me. And question 16, there's no place like home. A book that feels like home and you always want to return to it. And I could have easily picked Harry Potter for this easily, but I tried to, to dodge doing that. And so I picked Matilda by Roald Dahl because... This does feel like home. When I reread this earlier this year, I was like, oh my goodness, like, this book just, I read it so many times, look how battered that spine is. I was reading this all the time as a child, over and over and over again. And so when I read this, I do just feel like I'm a child back at home again with my mum. So there we have it. That is all the questions. This is quite a long tag and I really didn't think about who I was going to tag before. So I was that busy preparing all my answers that I didn't think about who to tag. So I'm going to name some people and hopefully they've not already been tagged or haven't already done it. So I'm going to tag Mel at Books With Wings and I'm also going to tag Amy and Laura over at Two Paper Girls. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more bookish content and book reviews from me and I will see you on my next video. Bye bye!